Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandra from AlphaNurseGuide.com. This is NCLEX RN Review Lesson 4. We're going to be doing respiratory medication questions. As always, you guys can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to get any updates. All links are in the description. Without the way, let's get started. Question 1. Zephyrolocust is prescribed for a client with bronchial asthma. Which laboratory test does the nurse expect to be prescribed? before the administration of this medication. A. Platelet count. B. Neutrophil count. C. Liver function tests. D. Complete blood count. The correct answer is C. Liver function tests. Rationale, Zephyrolocust is a leukotriene receptor antagonist used in the prophylaxis and long-term treatment of bronchial asthma. Zephyrolocust is used with caution in clients with impaired hepatic function. Liver function laboratory tests should be performed to obtain a baseline and the levels should be monitored during administration of the medication. It is not necessary to perform the other laboratory tests before administration of the medication. Question 2. Terbutaline is prescribed for a client with bronchitis. The nurse checks the client's medical history for which disorder, in which the medication should be used with caution. A. Osteoarthritis. B. Hypothyroidism. C. Diabetes mellitus. D. Polycystic disease. The correct answer is C. Diabetes mellitus. Rationale, terbutaline is a bronchodilator, and is contraindicated in clients with hypersensitivity to sympathomimetics. It should be used with caution in clients with impaired cardiac function, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, hyperthyroidism, or a history of seizures. The medication may increase blood glucose levels. Question 3. A chromalin sodium inhaler is prescribed for a client with allergic asthma. The nurse provides instructions regarding the adverse effects of this medication and should tell the client that which undesirable effect is associated with this medication. A. Insomnia. B. Constipation. C. Hypotension. D. Bronchospasm. The correct answer is D. Bronchospasm. Rationale, chromalin sodium is an inhaled non-steroidal anti-allergy agent and a mast cell stabilizer. Undesirable effects associated with inhalation therapy of chromalin sodium are bronchospasm, cough, nasal congestion, throat irritation, and wheezing. Clients receiving this medication orally may experience pruritus, nausea, diarrhea, and myalgia. Question 4. The nurse teaches a client about the effects of diphenhydramine, which has been prescribed as a cough suppressant. The nurse determines that the client needs further instruction if the client makes which statement. A. I will take the medication on an empty stomach. B. I won't drink alcohol while taking this medication. C. I won't do activities that require mental alertness while taking this medication. D. I will use sugarless gum, candy, or oral rinses to decrease dryness in my mouth. The correct answer is A. I will take the medication on an empty stomach. Rationale, diphenhydramine has several uses, including as an antihistamine, antitussive, antidiskinetic, and sedative hypnotic. Instructions for use include taking with food or milk to decrease gastrointestinal upset and using oral rinses, sugarless gum, or hard candy to minimize dry mouth. Because the medication causes drowsiness, the client should avoid use of alcohol or central nervous system depressants, operating a car, or engaging in other activities requiring mental awareness during use. Question 5. The nurse is preparing to administer a dose of naloxone intravenously to a client with an opioid overdose. Which supportive medical equipment should the nurse plan to have at the client's bedside if needed? A. Nasogastric tube. B. Paracentesis tray. C. Resuscitation equipment. D. Central line insertion tray. The correct answer is C. Resuscitation equipment. Rationale, 
the nurse administering naloxone for suspected opioid overdose, should have resuscitation equipment readily available to support naloxone therapy, if it is needed. Other adjuncts that may be needed include oxygen, a mechanical ventilator, and vasopressors. Question 6. A client has a prescription to take guifenesin. The nurse determines that the client understands the proper administration of this medication if the client states that he or she will perform which action? A. Take an extra dose if fever develops. B. Take the medication with meals only. C. Take the tablet with a full glass of water. D. Decrease the amount of daily fluid intake. The correct answer is C. Take the tablet with a full glass of water. Rationale, guifenesin is an expectorant and should be taken with a full glass of water to decrease the viscosity of secretions. Extra doses should not be taken. The client should contact the healthcare provider if the cough lasts longer than one week or is accompanied by fever, rash, sore throat, or persistent headache. Fluids are needed to decrease the viscosity of secretions. The medication does not have to be taken with meals. Question 7. A client has been taking isoniazid for two months. The client complains to the nurse about numbness, paresthesias, and tingling in the extremities. The nurse interprets that the client is experiencing which problem? A. Hypercalcemia. B. Peripheral neuritis. C. Small blood vessel spasm. D. Impaired peripheral circulation. The correct answer is B. Peripheral neuritis. Rationale, isoniazid is an anti-tubercular medication. A common side effect of isoniazid is peripheral neuritis, manifested by numbness, tingling, and paresthesias in the extremities. This can be minimized with pyridoxine intake. Options A, C, and D are not associated with the information in the question. Question 8. A client is to begin a six-month course of therapy with isoniazid. The nurse should plan to teach the client to take which action? A. Use alcohol in small amounts only. B. Report yellow eyes or skin immediately. C. Increase intake of Swiss or aged cheeses. D. Avoid vitamin supplements during therapy. The correct answer is B. Report yellow eyes or skin immediately. Rationale, isoniazid is hepatotoxic, and therefore the client is taught to report signs and symptoms of hepatitis immediately. The client should avoid intake of Swiss cheese, fish such as tuna, and foods containing tyramine, because they may cause a reaction characterized by redness and itching of the skin, flushing, sweating, tachycardia, headache or lightheadedness. The client can avoid developing peripheral neuritis by increasing the intake of pyridoxine during the course of isoniazid therapy. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.